what's the next thing we're going to go to? Well, this area, this very busy area, is an overlap of two types of structures. These are the pulmonary veins on the right and the pulmonary arteries on, on the right. So the pulmonary arteries and the pulmonary veins together overlap there. Let's take a look at that. Again, we see a pulmonary artery, which is this sweeping structure, and then right in front of it, a little circular structure, that's a pulmonary vein, which is running more superior inferior. Together, they make that hilum. This CT scan is from the same person, and it's also from the same CT scan that we will then cut to. So, let's fade away. Let's pull up our CT scan. We peel back, we're cutting, going back further and further, and now you can see the right pulmonary artery kind of running left to right across the hilum. The left pulmonary artery, which we'll get to later, kind of runs more front to back. Down below the right pulmonary artery, we have the left atrium, which is coming into view, and pulmonary veins, and you can see how the pulmonary veins draining into the left atrium. The pulmonary artery, or the right pulmonary artery, kind of overlap a little bit. Let's rotate around, look at the back, and here now it's on your right hand side. If going from the top, we see a little circle, which is the azygous vein. We see the pulmonary arteries, and below it we see these veins draining into the left atrium. Here's another pretty normal looking chest x-ray. This is a new person. So let's look at a nuclear medicine ventilation scan. And this kind of scan, and here it is, a patient inhales so radioactive gas seen on 33, and we take a picture showing where the gas went. And if we go back, you can see the dark area in the middle is the cardiac silhouette, and the white on the area on the side of the lungs. So if we go back, we can see that the ventilation is normal. This person breathes in, this tracer goes normally to both lungs. Now we switch to a perfusion tracer, which is this. Now again, we see the cardiac silhouette in the middle. We see the left lung is all taking up this perfusion tracer. It's showing where the blood flow goes. But on the right, we have a big empty area in the right upper lobe. There's no perfusion to the right upper lobe. Most often when this happens, it's an obstruction of pulmonary artery. But in this case, in this patient, it's not a pulmonary artery problem. It was a pulmonary vein problem. If your pulmonary vein cannot drain the lung, then the body reflexively stops sending blood supply to the lung and you get a situation like this. So, this patient had a pulmonary vein stenosis from a pulmonary vein ablation. A, a pulmonary vein ablation is a procedure where a catheter is placed up in the pulmonary vein and uh, either uh, electricity or cold is used to burn around the pulmonary vein and it stops abnormal heart rhythms in some patients. One possible side effect is that that vein can get narrowed. So here's a catheter, we're overlaying an angiogram. There's a catheter, it's trying to squirt into that pulmonary vein, but it's stenosed, repositioned a little bit, and there we're getting the pulmonary vein, and you can see the stenosis. So this vein was catheterized and stented, meaning a metal tube was put in to keep it open. And if we look at this, can you see the stent? There it is, right there. It's this metal tube keeping that vein open. So keep your eye on that stent, fade away, overlay the CT scan, peel back, and there's the stent. Just the point of this is to show that the pulmonary veins really do run in that area. And so the pulmonary vein, the right upper pulmonary vein is stented, you can see it as a white structure. The, right, the pulmonary arteries on the right are sort of a kind of browner color behind it. We peel back some more. You can see the stent draining into the left atrium, the pulmonary artery running above it. And there it is. Back to our normal case. So we talked about the SVC, the azygous vein, the pulmonary arteries. Next thing pulmonary veins. Now there's the, the left atrium. If you, it post, it's posterior and it normally doesn't make a heart border on a frontal radiograph. The reason is um, that uh, there's all these other structures in front of it which have borders with the lungs and so you don't see it unless it gets large, which is what we'll get to. And the reason, and you can see also that the left atrium uh, is right uh, anterior to the spine. And the reason this is is because the cardiac apex 
in most people points to the left. So this puts the left atrium posteriorly. If the cardiac apex pointed straight forward, then the right atrium would make the right and the left atrium would make the left, but that's not the case. Here's a new chest x-ray. This one is not normal. This patient had rheumatic heart disease, which gives you an autoimmune immune reaction to your cardiac valves. She had a prior mitral valve replacement for mitral stenosis. So this metal thing is a mitral valve, the valve between the left atrium and the left ventricle, which has been replaced, and it's mechanical. You can see, in this case, the outline of the left atrium, which is not normal. And the reason you see that is because this left atrium is very big. In addition to seeing the outline, the trachea, which is the airways, are split because the left atrium has gotten so big that it's crouching up, pushing up on the, on the carina, which is the branching point of the trachea, and splitting those, those um, bronchi. By the way, that thing right there is a lung cancer. We fade away, pull up our CT scan, scroll to the back, and we can see this big circular structure. That's all the left atrium, very abnormally big. Again, you can also see in the right lung, the lung cancer. We change this a little bit, the lungs now are showing up, and you can see this rim of white, which is calcification. Calcification in the periphery of the left atrium is seen in rheumatic heart disease, which this patient had. We're going to rotate a little bit, get a better view of the trachea and the carina, and you can see that the left atrium is splaying the carina. Here's a non-contrast CT cross-section. There's this big left atrium. And again, you can see how the edges of this left atrium are pooching out into the lungs. So if you're looking from the front, it would make a border. And you can also see the left atrial calcification. Here's our normal chest x-ray. Hmm, this one's not normal. We're looking at the right heart border. There's an abnormal contour. What is that? Fade away, go to our CT scan and peel back, and we see that that abnormal contour, which is normally made by pulmonary artery and veins, in this case is made by a big ascending aorta. The patient has an ascending aortic aneurysm. They had a bicuspid aortic valve and a big ascending aortic aneurysm. We look at the cross section, you can see that that big right circular structure is the ascending aorta and how it makes a border with the lungs, which is why you see it on the chest x-ray. We rotate, I'll go back a little. Here's our ascending aortic aneurysm. We're gonna rotate to the lateral and the aneurysm is dis difficult to see on the lateral. The RV outflow makes much of the anterior silhouette. A lot of that because this aneurysm especially is pooching kind of left to right and so it doesn't make a big impression front to back. So we pull up a lateral radiograph, it's not super striking. 